Hello everyone, I've been doing a lot of watercolor paintings recently and I've been asked a lot how I do my paintings. Just a reminder that I'm not a professional and I've only had so much practice and what works for me might not work for you. These are just techniques that I've picked up during practice and I'm just going to share them with you. With that being said, let's get on to the tutorial. These are the materials I used. Um, I will leave a um, list down in the description. And basically, this is a time lapse of my work. So on the right, I had my reference photo for the dress I was going to um, paint. On the right was all my supplies. Um, I'm erasing the sketch right here because I wasn't satisfied with it. And I was flicking away all the stuff um, from the eraser. And basically, here I am drawing the basic body shapes and where the arms are going to be positioned. Oh, by the way, this is Holly, um, one of my characters. She is a werecat and she is, I believe, a third grader. I <laughs> literally don't remember any of my OC's um, ages, um, except for like two of them. Um, anyways, um, I found this dress while um, I believe looking for it on um, safari and I was like oh my gosh I gotta put her in this um, right there I just erased um, a lot of the sketch but not the entire thing because you know I gotta draw the dress on top of her body first um, and yeah um, I'm so bad at doing voiceovers so I'm just gonna probably ramble on while I'm drawing um, Fun fact about Holly, um, I made her as a product of my friend and I um, messing around with um, shipping two of our characters together, and we drew. I drew her on finals day, and my friend was like, yes, I love her, and so she just stuck around, and she was created, I believe, like early June of... 2018. Um, here I messed with the sketch a bit, um, and this is basically the whole thing. Erased the legs under the dress, and here I am starting to paint. I have my water and my paper towel that I've used before and my color set, and that is my paintbrush that I got from Hobby Lobby. My watercolors were also from Hobby Lobby. Um, <laughs> it's at normal speed right now because like right here um, I spill some water on my bed and I had to clean that up and move all my stuff so then I wouldn't make a mess and pour a little water out in the sink um, and basically here I start off with a bit of orange um, like really watered down orange paint um, for her skin um, it won't look as orange later um, but basically first thing I do is get my base layers down first with very light layers of color. Um, so for skin, it's orange. For hair, her hair specifically, it was a darker orange, orangish red. Um, yellow for the sunflower, obviously. The dress didn't really have um, an undercolor, so I just kind of mixed browns and yellows and grays together. Um, you can't really see it, but I'm doing her hair right now. Um, and her eyes were just done. Um, I really don't know how to do voiceovers. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, well, okay. I'm just gonna, gonna ramble on while, um, the video plays. Um, currently I'm in the garage with my dog. I don't know if you can hear him, but he's, um, a very sweet dog. His name is Milo, and I've posted a couple pictures of him. He is a rescue, and he's the first dog I've had since, like, probably second grade. Like, second grade, we had a dog, and I'm out of school right now. I just graduated as of the time of recording. Um, and so... It wasn't until like 7th or 8th grade that we adopted Milo 
and he's always been a real sweetheart. Oh, here I am adding some shading to her skin. Um, I always do a little bit of pink or red um, at the fingertips, the nose, the cheeks, and under the neck, and wherever there's shading needed for the skin. And I always do the eyebrows the exact same color I did for the hair. Um, I did a little bit more shading between the jump cut, and now I'm working on the dress. I didn't exactly follow the design of the dress, I just wanted to get the color um, and the shape and the um, aesthetic of the dress down. So again, I use a lot of um, reds and browns, well not reds, um, browns, grays, and um, yellows to fit with the sunflower aesthetic. Here I'm painting in her little cat legs, and um, she's so cute. Um, first I did like a very light layer of an orangish red, and then I went to straight to red. Um, and I'm leaving some parts blank because she has like some tips, or, um, like a lighter pink salmon or whatever. Um, here with the ears, um, I don't color in the entire thing because I want like that tuft of hair from inside the ear to pop out. Um, yeah, I'm again adding gray to the dress. Um, it's kind of like an abstract thing I'm doing with the skirt. Um, <laughs> um, fun fact. Um, I have owned cats my entire life, um, like ever since my, I was born my mom always had a cat in the house, um, and I once made a list of all the cats we've had and <laughs> it was a lot. Um, oh, here I am adding some pink to her skin because I looked at her reference and she's a bit pinker than orange. And I kind of made a mistake by adding too much, way too much, uh, pink watercolor. So I dabbed her face. There was some that were still that was still on there, and so I like dabbed it really hard, added a bit of water, I think, and tried to get it off. But you can see that she looks a little sunburned. Oh well. Um, <laughs> now I'm shading the neck and the bit of her arm that's behind the dress and the armpit and making her look a lot more rounder, giving her some dimension. And I'm back on her feet again. Um, I, at one point I added some like reddish brown and um, kind of like a magenta color to her ears, tail, and legs because um, it helps stand against the rest of her hair and pop out even though her hair is like vibrantly red here in the painting. Um, jump cut here I added a bit of a more red overlay, worked on her skin a little more, worked on the dress a little more, added like the brown part to the sunflower. Um, Again, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, here I'm doing more with her hair. I always do that thing with the arched part of a character's hair, unless if like their bangs are more prominent or whatever. I don't know. Um, but yeah, here I'm just making shading, and it's kind kind of hard to do with curly hair because like it's all over the place. Um, and so I'm just like putting it in places I think would be good to put it in. Um, and leaving some spaces open for highlights. Here I messed up and I added a strand of hair that I didn't want and I couldn't get rid of it like at all even when the painting was done so I just kind of got it wet and like tried to dab my paper towel on it, wrote yikes and then erased it. Um, jump cut again. I um, filled in her nose, gave more definition to her uh, cat parts. Um, looks so-so. Um, still upset about that part. 
um, which I <laughs> couldn't get rid of. Um, e. Um, I also made her top part of the dress more gray. Um, here I am filling in her eyes and giving them more um, vibrancy. Um, fun fact about my workspace, I either work in my bedroom during the day or in the living room during the night um, because both spaces are pretty quiet um, during those respective times. Well, my bedroom's quiet all the time. Um, and um, I like to listen to music while I'm working and typically I'll have a pillow in between my legs and my sketchbook either drawing in my sketchbook or using that as a pad to paint on like in this case um, and I really don't like sitting at desks <laughs> um, and there's no room in my room for there to be a desk because there's like four people sleeping in the same room because um, <laughs> I'm living with family like not just my parents and brothers but also like my aunt uncle and their four kids um, jump cut again to more definition to her hair and I think more to her dress more to her fur like tufts and everything um, for some reason my camera was like not cooperating with me um, jump cut again and she's got more definition in her hair again um, and this is basically what it looked like before I started to use my 70 something Prismacolor pencils that I've had for like almost five years um, and basically instead of using my um, what's it called my inking pens the ones I use for like Inktober um, the ones I used to use for all my traditional works I'm using these color pencils to um, kind of seamlessly line where lines are definitely needed um, and I don't record all the lining because like you know I had a tripod on my shoulder and that's uncomfortable um, and basically yeah that's pretty much how I did it um, I'm just gonna jump cut one more time Oh, <laughs> and there she is in all her um, cute glory um, I do mess with it a little bit more between this part of the video and the next part um, but basically she's my baby and I love her and look at her cute little face um, I added some more like fun little details with a darker yellow pencil and some watercolor and basically added whiskers in my trademark and all that. Then I took a bunch of pictures on the kitchen counter. It was like 9, 9 p.m. and um, I couldn't get any outside because it's dark. And I ended up setting, settling on the second to last one and editing that. So here's what I'm doing with the editing. I'm messing with the exposure, um, brilliance, and all the other um, options that um, iOS has for editing photos. Um, basically just trying to improve the image to make it more appealing to my eyes and then eventually your eyes as the audience. Um, I heavily recommend this for when you're doing giant um, watercolor paintings or any traditional art um, because you want to make your work appealing to the rest of your audience and anyone who sees your um, work in the explore feed. You want to make your work look so good that people will start following you um, because that's basically what Instagram is about anyway. Um, basically I just mess with the settings um, as much as I can, see where I like it, um, how it contrasts with the actual piece and with the other settings before it. Um, and basically that's pretty much it um, it's super easy to do on your own um, I'm not sure about Android settings because I've never owned an Android 
uh, but yeah, there's the unedited version and the edited version and the final version I have posted on Instagram. Um, thank you so much for watching, and if you want another tutorial, leave a comment down below, and I will see what I can do. Um, again, thank you for watching, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you around. Bye-bye.